Changing the formatting of the text you add to your forms can dramatically enhance the look and feel. Increasing the font size, changing the text color, adding background color, and more. Welcome to QuickBase Junkie. I help QuickBase builders learn fast to deliver more. In this video, I walk you through six different style options, seven different examples using combinations of these styles, and two additional ways to use formatted text on a form. Let's start with the basic structure of the HTML. It begins with a left angle bracket followed by the word span. And then the most important part is that style comes next. You set the style equal to the name and value of the styles you want to include. Those are included in quotations with a colon between the name and value. And if you have multiple names and values that you want to include in your style, you separate those with a semicolon. You close out that initial span with a right angle bracket and then include the text that you want to have formatted. Last, you'll close out the span with a left angle bracket a forward slash, the word span, and then your final right angle bracket. One of the most common formatting changes is the size. You can see from my form here that the text is quite small, even though I'm zoomed in at 200%. To increase the size of a font, we add font-size to our style and give it a value in pixels, like 14, 18, or 24. To see how these examples show up on the form, let's go into the form settings. I've added multiple text elements to my form in order to demonstrate this for you. And when I check on the HTML box, it interprets the code as HTML and renders it on the form with the formatting I defined. If I don't check the box, it'll show the text just as I've typed it into the box. Let's head back to our form. To change the color of the text, you can use color followed by either the name of a color or its hex value. The text decoration can have a value of underline, line through, or overline, although I'm really not sure what overline is used for or what types of industries tend to use that overline. If you do know, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Next, we have the background. The background can help you highlight important text. Its name is background-color and can also have a color value using a color name or a hex code. Borders can add emphasis as well. The values here are a little different because you need to define three parts. The thickness of the border in pixels, followed by the style of the border, either solid, dashed, or dotted, and then the color. I do kind of like this pink border with the dots. So far we've gone through formatting of lines of text, but what if you want to format a whole block of text? In that case, you'll want to include display with a value of block along with your other formatting. Notice the difference when we don't use the block. In the first line here, we've used the block, so that gray background extends all the way across and around. When we don't display it with a block, it's almost like we're just highlighting the individual words, where the background is only gonna show up if it's behind a word. Similar with the border, we've got a really nice border going all the way around our text when we're using the block. However, when we don't use the block, it's outlining the individual text and, well, it just doesn't show up the way you want it to. Let's see what bringing multiple formats together looks like. In that case, you can achieve a result like this. Well, okay, this might be a little bit of overkill, but you can see when you use multiple elements together, you really get a large impact. I'll show you a few more examples, but I also want you to know that I have a cheat sheet with all these snippets and more, so you don't have to worry about taking notes or grabbing screenshots. I'll include the link below. Let's look at those examples. Here I have two different pieces of text that may display on an expense report with the version without HTML on the left and with it on the right. Quite a big difference, right? 
Next is some text from various employee surveys. Again, the version on the right has a lot more impact to it. The text on these checklists really benefits from calling out the important notes when formatting text, such as immediately notify management of all deficiencies, and it is not intended to be comprehensive. There are a few additional uses of HTML text on your forms that I want to share. The first is to create column headers like these. I really like the way these look on a form. And last, we have field labels. Here on the right, I've hidden the default field value and added a text element in front of the field with the formatted label. You'll notice the spacing is a little bit wider, but the labels are much more dramatic. I just shared numerous ways to format the text on your forms. To easily recall these options and more, download that HTML cheat sheet now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. If you learned something new, please like this video and to get your regular QuickBase Junkie fix, subscribe to QuickBase Junkie on YouTube or visit QuickBaseJunkie.com.